Hi everybody, it's me. I want to show you the painting I'm working on right now. This is an acrylic painting. It's a deviation from all the uh, videos that I've recently put up with that watercolor and I still have more of those to do. I just have to load all that stuff and make them, make them into a cohesive video. But right now I want to show you what I'm working on. I thought it might be a nice little break, but also it might be interesting for, I know some of you who are either using acrylic or thinking about using acrylic. Um, this is a painting that is on canvas. Let me, uh, hang on a second, let me turn on this light. I think it'd be better to have a little bit more light. Okay, let me try that again. This painting is not finished. It's about, uh, I don't know, roughly halfway done. And I'm painting on canvas that I have added a layer of gesso, sanded it down, added some more gesso, sanded it down. So it's very, very smooth. Long story, sometimes uh, uh, I would normally actually work on what is called gesso board by Ampersand, but I was doing this correction to my own video. I do use ampersand panels. There's one for oil painting I use called gesso board. And that's got a little bit of a tooth to it. A smooth surface, but it's a little bit of a tooth. They have a very smooth surface called clay board. And that's the one I use for acrylic. So that's my correction. Uh, experimenting with a different surface. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a canvas that's pretty smooth to begin with, but I wanted to make it even smoother. So I wanted to talk about the process of using acrylic, some of the similarities and differences, and also I wanted to talk about just uh, today I did something and it made me think, oh, I should make a video and then I could explain some other things. This is one of the photos that I was using. Uh, I printed these off, uh, these, print, these photos off originally a while back when my printer wasn't working, and somebody did these for me as a favor, and I had a couple of them and none of them were the exact same size as the actual painting like this one is a little bit smaller I had another one that was larger uh, I cut it up and I had it right alongside but the fact that it was a little bit bigger than the painting was kind of bugging me so then I went and used my printer which I now have it's an Epson uh, P800 and I made my own photos so here's the deal. This is a scene from Venice, and it's very uh, foggy or hazy, misty. And the sun is just barely revealing what's going on in the background. It's very ambiguous. But it's not completely um, covered up. So this is one of the hardest things to do, is to paint something that looks like something that's Hard to make out, but you can still make it out somewhat. It's not just blobs. And here's what I did that I think uh, might be a useful thing to explain. Here's the photo printed off, exact same size as the painting. And I'll, prob I'll probably make another one, and I'll cut it up and do that same thing where I, you know, whatever it is I'm painting, I'll put it right alongside that part of the painting. I'm sorry, I keep turning my head as I look over here. Is I hope the sound isn't too frustrating. See, right now I'm talking close to the phone. <laughs> now I'm pointing my mouth and my face towards the painting over here. Anyway, this is how the painting is supposed to look. It's a, it's a, it's a great feeling of atmosphere. This is, this is why I like this photo. And actually, this is not the place I've ever visited. This is one of the very rare times where I got a stock photo from Unsplash. And I just love this photo. Thought it would make a great painting. And it actually wasn't a high quality photo in the sense that it was not done with a really expensive camera. I'm pretty sure it was done with a uh, smartphone. But it was good enough and there was plenty of information there. But it was hard for me to make out what was going on in these, these foggy areas. So here's what I did. When I made my own photo it was already better. Just a little bit better than the one that I had printed for me before, when my printer was broken uh, sometime last year. But what I did is I went into, um, actually it didn't even use Photoshop, I used um, the Apple Photo Program. And I brought the shadows up so that the dark areas were not as dark anymore. And there's a lot of detail now that I could see. 
in the dark area. And the highlights, where it's very light, I brought that down. I brought the highlights down. And then I got this photo. This is not the way the painting should look. But this photo gives me a lot more information to use as I'm painting so I can kind of see what I'm doing. I can see where I'm at. I'm, I can see some of these things that are indistinct. They're still distinct, but they're sort of hazy in their, <laughs> in their indistinctness and in in, in the fact that it's foggy. They're easier for me to see in this photo. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not uh, confusing you. When you have a photo that has a lot of contrast, has a really light area and a really dark area, Sometimes that single photo all by itself just doesn't have enough information. It makes it hard to see what you're trying to paint. So you can, you can make the shadows not so dark and you can make the highlights not so light. And it moves everything towards the middle. And uh, that's what this photo is. And it really helps me a lot, especially like this, this building in the background. I could barely make out what it was. Now it's still going to be hard to paint. It's really hard to paint something that's so light. But at least I can see it better now in this photo. I can actually see the shape of the building. Even though it's very light, I can see some of the details there. Whereas in the photo that's really the, um, the working photo per se, it's so light that it's much harder to see. Speaking of harder to see, I still feel like I'm not giving you enough light to see what I'm doing. Well, hopefully that shows up. So here's the photo that I, I want the painting to look close to. Obviously a painting is a painting and it, doesn't ever look exactly like the photograph, but this is kind of the, the main reference photo. And then this is the photo that has more information just to make it easier for me to see what it is that I'm doing. So I brought the shadows up so they're not so dark, and the highlights, I made them not so light. And everything's moved more to the middle of the dynamic range. And that might be something really useful that you can use. And it doesn't require you to have an expensive photo editing program like Photoshop. Even the, uh, the photo program in Apple, the, uh, uh, what is it called? Whenever you open up a photo, it looks at it in pr preview. That's what it's called, it's called preview. I'm sure that there's something similar like that when you open up a photo, the simple photo editing software of any computer, you have a way to make the shadows not so dark and the light parts not so light. And that's a, a really nice thing about digital photos is that even when you can't see that stuff, a lot of times that stuff is there in the original photo file. You just have to use software to make it to make it reappear. Now, let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing here with the painting itself. Here we go. Let me turn on one more light. Uh, that's what I needed. That's a lot more light. Let me adjust. By the way, when you touch the screen on your phone like I just did, you can't see me, but I'm touching the screen. You touch it and you hold it down. This is a iPhone. And you hold it down for about two seconds. You'll see a little square appear and it stays in that, um, that mode. When I go back and forth and I change things, it's gonna stay focused where it was and it's gonna keep the same exposure. It's not gonna get lighter and darker and try to compensate. That's really useful when you're taking photos and you might move your camera a bit and all of a sudden the whole thing gets too dark or too light. Put your finger on the screen, hold it down for two seconds. In fact, let me, let me demonstrate that here. You'll see that the, um, the lights and dark should stay about the same. Um, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, if I go too close though, the lights are over here, they're not here. Let me, um, this is the most unprofessional video. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, it's free. You get what you pay for. So, what I wanted to show you is a little bit of my process. Using acrylic, the starting point for me for an acrylic painting is, is quite similar to my watercolors in that it starts with a pencil drawing and it starts with uh, transparent washes and then the difference is you go on top of those transparent washes with more opaque paint. That's how I use acrylic. In fact, that's uh, also somewhat how I use oil, although oil is a little bit thicker. Um, nothing here is completely finished, but you can see here, the darks are pretty dark. This is about as dark as I'm going to get. And the, the thing I, I do like about acrylic is that you can, um, you can really go back and forth between transparent and opaque and everything in between. And you don't have to worry about uh, the uh, fat, uh, over lean 
rule for oil painting. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. That means you're not using oils right now. Uh, so in other words, you can water it down, you can use it more thick, you can go back and forth with all different amounts of transparency and amounts of intensity with acrylic, and it, it all adheres and dries very permanently. So if you look here, I'm hoping this shows up, you can see that I've got down in this part, it's mostly transparent darks, just slightly opaque, and I had some of those uh, same types of under painting here, and then I'm starting to go over it with a more opaque paint on top of that. And that really does a good job of emulating the look of a, of a um, stucco type of building like I have here. Same is true here. This is all just starting to be opaque, just barely opaque. And if you want, you can actually keep everything only partially opaque. You can um, water down the paint enough that even though it's opaque uh, acrylic, because you're using it so thin with enough water, it is no longer completely opaque. And that's something fun to experiment. If you look at the, with the, um, the water, you'll see that it's more opaque now. I should have done this video uh, a week or two ago to show you the process a little bit more, but I thought I'd at least show you what I'm doing. It's gradually getting a little bit more opaque, but it's really thin. Uh, one of my one of my best friends and artist friends, uh, one of my favorite artists, seriously in the whole world, is Rod Penner, and he does nothing but acrylic, and he's he's probably the best acrylic painter doing photorealism in the world today, in my opinion. There's a few others who are in the same category as he. I, I don't want to make it sound like he's the only one, but he's the only one that I'm friends with, I guess. And he paints very, very thin. And so I'm kind of following his lead and in the way that he... Uh, he started with watercolor like I did, but he moved to acrylic many years ago and has really become a master at acrylic, whereas I don't consider myself quite a master yet. It's uh, It takes a while to get used to. But there's some real advantages. It dries very fast and it dries permanent, which is... A great thing if you want to add layers right away. It's a bad thing if you make a mistake, you can't wipe it off. I shouldn't say that. When you paint really thin and you're painting on a smooth surface with acrylic, if you make a layer and you don't like it, you can wet it down and you can scrub it off if you do it that day or that hour. Even as, It's even better if you do it within 10 minutes because it dries within a few minutes. But you can actually re-wet layers and remove them if you do it quick enough and if they're thin enough to begin with. You can't do that, you know, two days later. I'm just listening back to this now, and I think what I said might be a little confusing, but you can wipe away some of the acrylics, uh, certain layers of acrylics that you've just done, and wipe them away completely, or at least wipe them away substantially within minutes. The longer you wait, the less likely it'll work, and some pigments are more permanent and staining than others, so it's, uh, there's no universal way of explaining that. Um, so maybe I'll make another video of this as I get a little bit further along, but if I zoom in here, hopefully you kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. Very thin layers, starting out mostly transparent. I can see the pencil lines. That's the big benefit of working with transparent layers, and, and gradually you build up to more opaque layers, which is great for realism in many ways. You can eliminate the look of the texture that you have with watercolor, because sometimes you don't want to have texture showing because there is no texture in that real thing. A perfect example is the sky. I didn't use an airbrush. I'm not going to use an airbrush. I, I don't have anything against airbrushes. It's just not my favorite thing. So I'm using a scumbling technique, very, very thin layers, and there's about four, maybe five layers where I'm applying paint in, uh, in a really fast manner using a soft-haired brush. And actually, you can see it here. It goes beyond the edge, and the reason why it doesn't go beyond the edge of these buildings is because I have since painted over that part where it actually was kind of feathered along the edges because I wasn't going to the edge carefully. I was working quickly, kind of like a scumbling technique. One more thing that I think might be really helpful. I've never used acrylics without using this palette. It's called the Masterson palette, and here's how it works. You may not want to use this for some reason. You may have your own technique that you're happy with, so just ignore this. But it's a waterproof, kind of like a Tupperware tray. And there's a sponge underneath. You get it soaking wet with cold water. And then they have this really weird special paper of theirs that you put in a sink with very, very hot water, boiling water. 
and you let it soak for a few minutes and it becomes semi-transparent you put it on top of that cold sponge which is soaking wet and now you can put acrylic paint in a palette and it literally stays wet and workable for as long as two weeks maybe even three weeks and in a really extreme case if you have a big pile in there but really this is something for you to use your paints within a week or two at the most because it does start to soak into the palette paper in there that paper is not like a solid surface which is why it can draw the water up from the sponge but it also means that if you have just a little puddle it'll soak down into the palette and you really can't use it again but this has been a really useful tool it doesn't have the greatest seal around the edges they tell you that you're actually i'm kidding i'm not kidding you, you they tell you in the instructions to put vaseline inside the groove let me show you this see how it's got a it's got a groove so that it seals better well i i did that when i first got it years ago and you rest your hand on the edge of the palette to to kind of work you like you do and you get Vaseline on your wrist and then you get Vaseline on your painting and then you have a certain spot on your painting that just for some reason nothing adheres to it. Well, that's weird. What's going on that I figured out? Oh, it's got Vaseline on it. So I don't recommend the Vaseline trick. Uh, but I do, while I have this thing out, if I go take a lunch break or go to the bathroom or if I'm going to be gone for 10, 20 minutes, I will put the cover on. They, you don't have to do that, but I think that gives you a little bit more time. I also have a little spray bottle. These are left over from like eyeglass cleaner and I have clear water in there and I spray the top every so often. That matters more if you're in a dry environment, obviously. If it's summertime, if you're painting where it's really dry, you'll need to do that more often. I'm in a basement and it's winter right now, which means the heat is on, which means it's fairly dry. So I, I'm spraying the top just to keep it from possibly getting tacky. I probably do that more than I need to, but... And I put tape around this because I actually have... Uh, here we go. I actually have cleaner for my glasses and you don't want to spray this stuff over your acrylic paint so i put tape over this so i wouldn't get the two bottles mixed up uh, one more thing about acrylics you can use the same brushes as you use for watercolor that's fine but what we've found when i say we i should say people who use acrylic maybe somebody will correct me because they they haven't found this for themselves but i've heard from other acrylic painters that you use synthetic brushes and for whatever reason because they're plastic based the plastic based acrylic paint also seems to work a little more smoothly um, and you don't have to spend much money so that's nice i've experiment experimented with a bunch of different brands i just got a dick blick one you can even get these cheap ones i think i mentioned this in another video you can get these cheap ones from hobby lobby and they're not bad you know if it costs two three maybe five dollars Oh gosh, it didn't last me more than two weeks. Oh well, <laughs> it's not a big deal. You know, it's not like a Kalinsky Sable brush that costs $25. So I don't recommend you get the cheapest brushes, but you don't have to spend much to get a good synthetic brush. They're actually a lot less expensive than natural hair brushes. Oh, one more thing. This is another little tip that I've discovered. Uh, in fact, well, this is the kind of um, paint that I started with when I first experimented with acrylic, which was the uh, more liquidy kind. Golden and Liquitex are the two biggest brands, as far as I know, that kind of started making acrylics at the very beginning. There's a bunch of companies making them now. And honestly, I don't, I don't think there's a huge difference between them. But I like, I like these two companies. I especially like Golden because they, uh, if you have questions, you can actually call up and talk to an expert there. And... Uh, they actually paint the actual color on the label. That's not a printing thing. That's actually the real paint. So they're really good about helping artists to get all the information, but they're both good. I know Rod Penner uses Liquitex. Uh, they both have information on the backs. I really like knowing if it's opaque or if it's transparent, if it's glossy, if it's matte. They give you the, all that information on their paints. And this is kind of a funny thing for me, but I, I started uh, buying these kinds of paints and they have different names depending on which one you buy but they basically call it like golden calls it fluid acrylics liquitex call them soft body acrylics and it's obviously more of a pourable paint which for a detail guy you know that seems like a good idea and you might want to try those but i've actually moved back to getting the thicker kind the traditional the one that they started with, they all started with. Here's a golden version. This is their titanium white. Again, they painted it on there, but you can't see it. And then here's Liquitex. 
This is their cadmium yellow. They call it heavy body as opposed to the more liquid ones. And, and when I, what I'm doing with this palette that I just showed you, that palette, like I said, has a kind of a wet surface. It's a wet, damp surface. And that thinner, more fluid acrylic kind of spreads out more quickly and kind of soaks into that paper and I kind of lose it. So I'm actually using this thick acrylic and you can obviously water it down with your brush and some water to make it as thin as you want. The downside to that is you can you can make it less opaque than you wanted. That's the whole purpose, I think, of these fluid acrylics, was they were trying to figure out a way to make it really, really liquidy, but also as intense and opaque as could be. I, I, I don't know. I still think they're not nearly as um, intense as I would like. That's the biggest difference in my mind, in my experience, between using watercolor and acrylic, all things being equal. If you take a puddle of watercolor and you take what seems to be the same exact puddle of acrylic and you paint them, the watercolor is more intense and the color is more um, vibrant. The acrylic always seems to be a little less intense than you thought it was when it was in its puddle. Once it's dry on the piece of paper or on the canvas, it seems like it's not as intense. That's been my experience. Maybe I'm missing something. The good thing about acrylic is just add another layer. It's dry already by the time you even noticed it. So if you like layering, uh, and, and you like watercolor, acrylic might be the way for you to move into a different painting medium as opposed to oil. Now, I will do videos later about oil. I love oil, too. I, I really like all three. The worst part about acrylic, by far, in my mind, is the inability to take two soft patches of paint and just blend them softly together like you do with oil paint. That's the best part about oil. And you don't have the ability to do a wet into wet wash with acrylics in the same way that you can do with transparent watercolor. So blending really soft uh, blends with, with acrylic is something that requires kind of a cross hatching technique or you use an airbrush. That's why some of the best photorealists use acrylic. Uh, they use an airbrush, they get incredibly soft blends which is something you may want to look into. It's not my favorite thing. Again, I just, I have an airbrush. I use it every once in a while, but I just don't like the motor. I don't like cleaning it. I don't like having this tiny little puddle in this little holder and you might spill it and you might push the button and it sprays all over the place. So that's just me. You have to work with your, you know, what are you, what are you comfortable with? What, what are you not comfortable with? Well, you know, if you have other options, do the thing you're comfortable with, you know, don't make your life so miserable. It's already hard enough making good art. So <laughs> that's kind of the way I look at it. Also, I do use a sponge and a big canister of water when I'm doing acrylic. If you saw my earlier videos where you saw me doing that, I use the same exact technique where I control the amount of water in the brush using a sponge, just like I do with watercolor. So if you're trying to get into a painting medium that doesn't re require you to use glass, you want to have a painting medium that maybe gives you some more options, acrylic might be something you want to look into. If you do acrylic on paper, uh, you still probably want to use glass, so that's why if you paint on canvas or some type of a panel, a wooden panel or a uh, like a masonite sort of panel, you don't have to use glass. Technically, you don't have to use glass with paper, but traditionally that's kind of the way it's it's been done because you still have the potential of of getting water on an acrylic painting on paper and causing it to to have some watermarks show up. Whereas that wouldn't be the case if you were using more of a canvas hard surface. Uh, again, I could be wrong. There might be somebody who's selling acrylics on paper because they somehow varnish them. That's another option, I think. It's just not the tradition. I don't think there's very many people doing that. Okay, I just remembered an artist friend of mine, Jim Wynn or James Wynn. He does acrylics on paper, and for many, many years they were sold under glass or plexiglass if they were really big. And I remember talking to him maybe five, six, eight years ago, and he was saying that he's taking his acrylic on paper and he's gluing it to a wooden panel and he's able to frame them and sell them without glass. So there is an example of that in my memory. I'm just trying to give you kind of the gist of things. Okay. Whew. I talked a lot. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll do more of these later. Bye.